welcome my dear students today we will discuss the topic history of surgery i am i myself is dr arun joseph p history of surgery why should i learn this topic is it important i came to medical profession because i hated history geography mathematics again when i came come and i am coming here to surgery again i have to learn history that is very pathetic but it's very it is difficult you know no it is not history of surgery is very important it is not at all boring it is better than a thriller movie i assure you now come on what is the use of learning this history of surgery you see by learning the history it changes our attitude towards the different things the different procedures the different paraphernalia we seeing during the surgery of course one of the lowest degraded thing which when we see in a surgical theater often most of us not give much of an important is our uh, you know see betadine solution nobody considered considers betadine as a big thing you when you you give more importance to the circular staplers you give more importance to the laparoscopic instruments but betadine yes betadine is uh some kind of a downtrodden he is essential but some kind of a downtrodden guy like a sewage cleaner some kind of a cleaner in a surgical theater you don't consider it important you don't you, you know it is important it is, it is you know it is inevitable but you don't give as, as much important as a lap instrument or something like that so but once you know the story behind this beggar on the street once you behind the story uh, behind once you know the story behind a businessman in a, a Ben's car many a times you will respect both of them in the same mode many a times if you know the story behind a person you will come to respect it the, your attitude towards the person changes completely like that when you know the story behind the evolution of betadine the 10 percent age betadine where we drive we will start respecting it when we see a cat gut sutures we come in a time when many considers that cat gut sutures are inferior or getting outdated but once you know the story you will start respecting cat gut sutures when you take cat gut in your hand your hand will tremble your there will be respect in your minds the surgical drives given to the junior most person most of the time you drive the patient i will come and the sometimes the junior most person will not feel good always i have to try man he don't give me he doesn't give me to put a one incision no when you drain you know the story behind the asepsis and antisepsis you start respecting the drives when you know the lights the lights oh, it is the light is dim here or it is not but it is the yellow light why don't they change into the neon lights or else led lights the thought process like this come but once you know how these lights evolved what is the important how does the importance of the lights came into being into surgery you start respecting the attitudes towards towards the surgery attitudes towards the surgery the procedure the instruments the materials the drapes the floor the softeners the light everything changes everything comes alive once you know the history and there lies the beauty of the history of surgery there once you know the story behind each and every guy of guy in this operation theater you will start learning respecting them you will start learn this you will start to understand the importance behind them and that is where the beauty of the history of the surgery lies early operating theater we have we are see first of all the surgeon may not be well trained he may be a uh, barber you know he is not well trained with the anatomy he doesn't know any regional anatomy or he is neither no he neither doesn't know what pathology he is treating that is the level of surgeon surgery then you can see the blood spilling everywhere there is no method to control bleeding there is no method for adequate hemostasis coming to the patient to see the persons with him they are the holding the patient so that he doesn't run away so that he doesn't move 
so blood and movement there is no anesthesia you can see the patient's uh, the patient's head out there he is also under stress you see the foil is a foreign body but the surgeon doesn't know whether there is a vascular injury or it is a muscle injury is there a fracture the surgeon doesn't know he is actually blind both about the anatomy and about the pathology you can see the dim lights there are no lights to assist the surgeon many a times the surgeons will be working from the sunlight from working in the sunlight there were not many artificial lights sometimes in the candle candle light you can see the hands of the surgeon there is there is not even a glove on in his hand you can see the instruments they are not sterilized they are lying down in the table there is no face mask no gowns nothing there either now from there you can see it has come to our modern day operating theater with all sorts of facility the gowns the lights the electronic media the sterilized instruments the suction apparatus the laparoscopy instruments and what not the time has changed this evolution from that olden day surgery to this newer world new modern era of surgery is what we are going to learn today yes we are discussing about this evolution as we have said but what is our road map what what is the road through which we go from the olden day surgery to this new era of modern surgery so in brief we will discuss through the following first we will learn about the knowledge of human anatomy how the world came to know that human anatomy knowledge of human anatomy is important before doing surgery now it appears funny but there is a story behind it methods of controlling hemorrhage then we'll go for the pathophysiological basis of the surgical disease not regarding the pure pathophysiological basis of the disease in the pathology point of view but the history of point of view the advent of anesthesia now the dawn of antisepsis and asepsis x-rays yes x-rays are important in surgery theaters it was operation theaters earlier lot of people come and see sit around see the theater now it has gone into operating room how does how that evolution came into being still our operating theaters are operating rooms are called operating theaters why why where did this name theater come how did it change into room the journals and societies the journal societies we read we read on a day to day basis how did they come into being women surgeons still many in many places women surgeons are not accepted or women surgeons are given less preferences or some say it is not a profession for women in the earlier period now as the generation has changed now lot of women surgeons are coming up and women surgeons are sometimes better than many male surgeons there is there is no difference in skill between the woman and the female sometimes woman man and the woman sometimes they are much more finer racism in surgery did it have any effect yes and finally to the modern era of surgery this is what we are going to discuss today knowledge of human anatomy knowledge of human anatomy is required to perform surgery it only means that much now it will appear very much ridiculous that it was so difficult for surgeons to understand this concept this was the period of barber surgeons where there was no distinction between surgeons and barbers surgeons the term surgeons may not be even coined that coined during that period during those times surgeons were even not considered medical men they were both blind about the pathology and about the anatomy and dissecting the corpses dissecting the dead body touching the dead body cutting through the dead body everything was about was the was the work of this lower class of people so 
how will they ally the medical men learn about the anatomy so they thought that rather than going a class down they will stick on to the fact that they don't need anatomy for performing surgery or rather putting the surgery all together as not a medical science at all this was during the period of the 16th century all this was happening in 16th century then who came then a person came from out of nowhere who said that anatomy is required to perform surgery that anatomy is forms the basis the road map the plan for the surgery and dissecting corpses dissecting the dead body is required to learn about anatomy yes that person is andreas vesalius welcome to that great man yeah especially now let me let me speak about while uh, going through the different steps of evolution we are not going to go in a dry and drabby way we always have a hero there we always have a surgeon scientist there we always have a person who has lead led the surgery that has given surgery the direction the forward propel to propulsion towards the evolution into the modern day surgery and during the 16th century where anat human anatomy was blur where human anatomy was going in a mind going in our mind the art of dissection the art of dissection we perform in our anatomy lecture hall was brought about by this man by andreas vesalius he not only said those said that words he also wrote a book regarding that de humani corpusis fabrica lubriceptum he wrote used latin he used the language of the intelligent like sanskrit for us sanskrit for he you he used the language of the upper class people during that period to learn the knowledge of human anatomy that paved the stone he uh, paved the stone or the stepping stones for the surgery when we are talking about methods of controlling hemorrhage as far as the history is concerned we are not talking about the harmonic scalpel or the ligature or the bipolar cautery or so on and so forth we are only talking about the fact that the blood vessels bleeding can be controlled if we suture the blood vessels or if we tie the blood vessels the, the bleeding can be controlled this basic fact came into being in the 16th century until that point it was all it was blood everywhere everywhere blood any procedure blood everywhere so ambrois pare who is the man who is the hero during that time he is ambrois pare he brought about this concept and he saw showed that he could effectively control bleeding by tying the blood vessels he used silk most of the time so many a times there was infection during that period while tying blood vessels so he brought out the silk suture out through the skin and at a later stage he removed that sutures once he has sure that the blood vessels are tied off and it has healed he removed that sutures in order to prevent infection he used vernacular language to uh, to spread his teachings he didn't restrict it to the elite class he didn't restrict to the upper class he taught everybody he used vernacular language he used the common man's language so that it's spread to almost everybody on, on for all the people and his famous words that he is humble are i treated him and god cured him that's about methods of controlling hemorrhage and ambrois pare pathophysiologic basis of surgical diseases the man of this time is john hunter you see he doesn't look like a classical surgeon he seems thoughtful with books 
and less of scalpel his hand is holding the pen yes he was more of a scientist rather than a surgeon what did he find out he f he find out that the knowing the pathophysiological mechanism are important as far as surgery is concerned that means when we go into an abscess rather than just draining the abscess we should know what is the cause of the abscess why did it form rather than just approaching the hernia an obstructed or a strangulated hernia with an incision we should know what is hernia how did it come into being why did it go into strangulation or what is strangulation how does hemorrhage affect people how does trauma affect people he couldn't do all this in human beings you know so most of his experiments were done on mainly work using animal experiments and what was the result he had a lot of specimens of animals and some of them were human some of them of human being specimens with pathology he had a collection of around 13000 specimens this was an immense a large collection which is which was a great which could have been a great surgical museum when did all this happen it happened during the time period of john hunter from 1728 to 1793 and an anatomist a biologist a naturalist a physician a surgeon a pathologist he was everything so what happened to his museum the great surgical museum to a despair of the surgical community that great collection of specimen was destroyed in the nazi bombing in world war 2 but at least to the happiness of hunter it happened in 1794 after his the next major advancement in the evolution and history of surgery is the discovery of anesthesia sometimes we make fun of the anesthetist we are kind of a, the surgeons have a kind of thought process that if there was no surgery there was there would not have been anesthesia but actually when we go into the history of surgery we will find out that it may have been the other way about without the discovery of anesthesia we might have been in the 1830s or 1840s the growth of surgery might have been stunted or it has it would have been blocked in 1830s or 1840s with the advent of anesthesia how did anesthesia came into being it started from the discovery of nitrous oxide and uh, chloroform etc in the 1830s the scientists on the scientists or and the chemists on inhalation found that it has an um, exhilarating properties so what was what happened the chemists traveled all through the countryside conducting laughing gas parties laughing gas parties were in vogue in 1830s you can see the laughing gas machine here this is a laughing gas machine emitting the nitrous oxide or laughing gas and everybody was having a fun time so what is what have what is happening it is it was even said that is it is the one of the best treatment for an angry wife because she will be the most fun in the laughing gas parties and another thing is in the laughing gas parties people get injured they became they become so uh, exhilarated that sometimes they hit each other but they are all happy still they are happy and smiling and uh, having a fun time but some uh, some dental surgeons found out that the pay people are not feeling pain during these injuries in laughing gas parties they started using in dental surgeries initially and one of the dental surgeon william g morton persuaded a surgeon dr warren to perform the first procedure for first surgical procedure in a patient it happened in 1846 this is uh, william j william g morton he is administering the laughing gas to the patient you can see the patient is knocked out and this is dr warren and he is doing the surgery in the uh, for a swelling in the neck and it was a successful surgery and the patient didn't know anything so after the surgery dr warren said that gentlemen 
This is no humbug. Means it is really a genuine thing. The anesthesia is really genuine. It is no humbug. And this with the advent of anesthesia, the one of the greatest problem of surgeon that is mobility, that is mobile field, the mobility of the patient is stopped and the patient and as far as the patient is concerned, he doesn't have to know the pain. Surgery has grown into the next step in the evolution. The next major change in the surgical evolution is the development of asepsis and antisepsis. One of the major problems even after anesthesia, even after the advent of anesthesia that heralded the surgery was infection. Infection after immediately after the surgery, infection, infection later on after the surgery, infection of uh, sutures inside the body, infection everywhere. So even, even if there were surgeons with technical brilliance, many of their surgeries were gone in vain because they were unable to control infection. During this time, there came the germ theory of Pasteur. But before that, before that, what were the surgeons doing? They were using crude methods, you know, they were using very much crude methods. They used to apply boiling oil onto wounds. They are used to apply boiling oil onto the surgical wounds, incites the infection. So many a times it usually complicates the infection and the patient had a hell of a time. But some surgeons still felt that this was not the right method, but they didn't know an answer how to control the infection. With the spirit of uh, Pasteur's germ theory, Joseph Lister came into action in surgical field with his asepsis and antisepsis. The man during our time is Joseph Lister. What did he do? What did he found out? He found out that carbolic acid, he found it out in 1865, carbolic acid can decrease the infection rate by applying it to the wounds, by cleaning the theater with carbolic acid. He used carbolic acid for each and everything. So that to decrease the germs, uh, decrease the amount of germs and prevent the infection. Another major contribution of Joseph Lister was that he found out sterile absorbable sutures. During those times, only silk sutures were used. What is the problem with silk sutures? Silk sutures inside the wound can, inside the wound while suturing the muscle can later on lead to infection and sinuses. So he found a sterile absorbable suture, the first thing, the first person to think like that. It's great, you know. He found from the cattle gut, from the cattle intestine, cat gut from cattle gut, cattle intestine, and he treated that suture with carbolic acid. And he used to, he, he sutured it as we suture now the muscle or the deeper tissue, and he used to cut short the suture. What Ambrose, if you remember what Ambrose Pere did, Ambrose Pere brought out the suture so that he can remove it on a later date but what uh, Joseph Lister was confident that his suture will not get infected because he has treated it with carbolic acid treated it with carbolic acid so it will become clean and he has cut short as we do in during our this period and cat cat gut cat is still in is still in use now in his changes he he brought about a lot of changes in the operating theater mechanisms and this and the procedures you know different from Ambroise Pare. Ambroise Pare was, uh, his Ambroise Pare's procedures were followed during that period and Joseph Lister brought about procedural changes. So it, 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 his methodology has gone into uh, a term like called Listerism. But Listerism was not easily acceptable among surgeons, among all surgeons. What was the problem? One thing is carbolic acid has an unpleasant smell. It is a dirty smell that nobody wants that smell around in the theater over the patient. So carbolic acid has an unpleasant smell. Next thing was, it brought about procedural changes. Until that time they had a method of doing things. They had a procedure of doing certain things. But with the advent of this listerism, what happened that there, is, there, is, there, are, there became procedural changes. Procedure became a lot of cumbersome, cleaning the theater, spraying the theater, a lot of cumbersome procedures. You can see the lister in action here. This is the carbolic acid machine which sprays in the operation theater. 
so what happens it became it became a really cumbersome affair the use of carbolic acid so listerism was not accepted one because one because carbolic acid was unpleasant easily accepted then comes then because there were procedural changes and surgeons many of the surgeons were unable to understand the germ theory it was based on the germ theory was joseph lister brought about this asepsis and antisepsis and many of the surgeons were even unable to understand the germ theory so they were not ready to bring up bring asepsis and antisepsis into their technique even with the amount of infections they had next they were in the early stages the asepsis and antisepsis were not perfect you know it is a in now in the more even in the modern stages it is the trail of asepsis and and it is a chain of asepsis and antisepsis you have to make sure that each and every step while the while uh, draping the patient while cleaning the abdomen while cleaning the surgical field with betadine you should not uh, we should not leave any islands you know we should come to clean the field completely with betadine during the drape it should be perfect if the drape should not touch there you should not touch there your glove should be perfect your glove should be worn in the correct way in a sterile way and it should not touch on the wall it should not touch on the next person's body so this chain of asepsis has to be maintained everywhere for successful results so during the early stages of the asepsis and antisepsis this chain was broken at many points so during at those stages many surgeons were unable to replicate the results of lister so it was another problem which came into being on accepting listerism but this cumbersomeness was decreased when heat sterilization was brought about in 1890s and uh, people and more and more surgeons got un- understood the importance of asepsis and antisepsis and finally the joseph lister's theory and joseph lister's message was accepted all over the surgical field and even now it is the, the fundamental principles that is in change by the last part of 19th century the basis of surgery has been quite laid there has been asepsis and antisepsis there has been the knowledge of anatomy pathophysiology knowledge of pathology was getting better and there was anesthesia so the basic pillars for surgery has already been laid out and are becoming strong next the surgeon had to improve their diagnosis what happened as the, what helped us then yes it was x-rays with the with the x-rays with the discovery of x-rays by ronjen ronjen discovered x-rays and the first x-ray of his wife's hand here with the ring there was discovered by ronjen in 1895 with the advent of x-rays the diagnosis of uh, surgery became diagnosis in surgery became more and more well established and it brought about an improvement in surgical diagnosis by the early 20th century the surgeons are ready they have all the pillars ready anesthesia and sepsis knowledge pathology everything knowledge of pathology everything is ready but what is the problem even though the surgeons were confident the patients were not the patients were not confident regarding the surgery this was a major problem during then during, during that time and in many of the cases many of the surgical diseases there were not any standard surgical approach or pathology approach to the pathology so it was the period of the growth of experimental surgery newer newer procedures were being experimented and results were getting out so during the surgeons during that period had a difficult thing that they had to send they had to spread the message that that surgery was a scientific endeavor and surgical operations are a therapeutic necessity that was a peculiar problem during the early 20th century social acceptability was another problem and they the surgeons had to explain the explain to the patients explain to the community everywhere 
to gain the social acceptability for surgery and for now during this period surgeon needed patients for the growth of the surgery these were the problems faced during the earliest early 20th century but as history progresses as the time progresses surgeons we are going to coming out of it you are going to come out of it who is going to lead it you see the next major landmark in the history of surgery was that it changed from the theater operation theater to operation room you know that the still the name still the word theater lingers lingers still now everywhere the name has not changed to room how did this came as operation theater how did the name came to be as operation theater initially you see this earlier surgical theater you can see galleries on both sides you can see the galleries on both sides in these galleries the surgeons in this in the presence of this much people the surgeons operate and it was come some sort of an art to be show shown to be showcased but then came this man he was of a different attitude he is william halsted what did halsted say he is some uh, he is uh, some sort of a different type and aloof personality he said there is no more uh, there is no, he came from a rich family so he said uh, and he had enough schooling he said there is no more like theater and all is not necessary there should be no more of a sterile precautions are important let us so nobody want to no, nobody need to see this surgery and all we will do the surgery uh, the surgeon and the patient is only required and a few of the staff nurses are required no unnecessary people are required let them go get out that is what he said and he took the operations to the room rather than uh, took the took he uh, sacrificed actually he sacrificed all of that glare and glamour and uh, the theatric setups to a room where nobody is there to see nobody is seen nobody will uh, see your skill nobody will applaud you only you be your you be you more put your marks for yourself that is where the difference that halsted bring about first next he brought surgery from the melodramatics of theater to the room one what is his name he was a technically brilliant surgeon he was a daunting surgeon he was ready to go in any part of the human body and he had numerous takes with numerous surgeries numerous projects like radical mastectomy and in thyroid and in intestinal anastomosis a lot of places halsted has contributed during that period when the anesthesia was scars uh what happened is everybody speed was given very important so do it fast do it fast why do you want to do it slowly do it fast even still now it lingers our uh, older sir, uh, sirs or older uh, sirs say you do it fast why are you make, making things slow do it fast speed was a very important criteria then but halsted said we have anesthesia now let us be meticulous and safe and slow rather than the fast surgery that was brought about by william halsted character wise he was abrupt he was eccentric he was introvert nobody was easily to easily accessible as far as he is concerned to know about his character he performed this blood transfusion on his own sister after a postpartum hemorrhage from uh, his blood he transfused his blood to his sister he performed a in acute cholecystitis with abscess for formation he, per, he he performed a biliary surgery on his mother in the kitchen table of course he used sterile precautions and he he is he is a guy like that he is a daunting guy he can do surgery anywhere and everywhere but he is meticulous safe and slow one of the most important characteristic of halsted was he brought about the residency system in surgical training he made sure that not only he grew his persona grew he made sure that new generations of surgeons are brought about a generations of surgeons has been taught by generation of surgeon has been taught by halsted 
That is the importance of Halstead. And another beautiful thing regarding Halstead is, he trained, he trained students to become surgical teachers rather than mere operating surgeons. He wanted the flame of surgery to go forward. That is what Halstead has given to surgery. From theatre to room, his technical brilliance, his importance of safety, his residency systems, his training of surgical teachers, everything made Halstead a remarkable man in the evolution of surgical history. Next is the face of journals and societies. Surgeons were not uh, surgeons like Halstead were in America based, US based. But surgeons were not only developing in America, they were developing around the world. And during this early 20th century, there was the rise of German surgeons. We hear about the Theodore Cocker, Theodore Billroth, Billroth 1 gastrectomy, Billroth 2 gastrectomy, Caesar Rue, Rue and Rue and Y anastomosis. The, during this period came the rise of the German surgeons. So surgery was everywhere. Surgery was in an international has gone into an international arena. So during this period, international societies started coming up. During this period, journals being has started is was being to started to publish. What happens is until that time most of the surgeons keep their trick inside their minds but when every during this period everybody was asked, every surgeon was becoming emphatic they started to publish their work they started to write about their work and publish their work and spread it around the world this happened during the period of the early 20th century the, the, the rise of the German surgeons was important because they were the people who first uh, took the principles of antisepsis and asepsis and uh, went forward in the uh, trail of surgery. Then came the World War II. With the down going of Axis powers, the same happened for the German surgeons. After, uh, after World War I, the German surgeons had a down, uh, went down. Then the European surgeons came up. The name or uh, the noted names during this period are Alexis Carroll, who developed a technique of vascular anastomosis. What he did is he did or even organ transplantations in dogs. But due to some unknown process, now we know it is a rejection, the transplants often fail. So that was the contribution of Alexis Carroll, vascular anastomosis and uh, better care of wound during the World War I period. The American College of Surgeons was formulated in 1930 as a lot and lots of experimental surgery and lots of surgery are coming out. We don't know which surgeon is uh, morally right or which surgeon is wrong or what are the standards of care. In the, in the formation of American College of Surgeons in 1913, what they did was, it was em emphasized the importance of ethics and also the types of procedures in surgery. Again, during this period, we don't we didn't know we don't know which surgeon is good or which surgeon is bad. So surgical exam, surgical board examinations, residency training, and board certified surgeons came to being in the 1940s period, and. This is the period where surgery was getting more and more. It, sur, the surgeons are, were trying to self-criticize and improve themselves, and they were removing the black dots, black dot surgeons or the tarnished surgeons or the gimmick surgeons from among them, and bringing about the pure, the well-natured, the good-minded, competent surgeons and methods for identifying them. This was the period of journals and societies. So when we present our journals, when we go to the conferences, we should understand that it all, all these started budding from this point of time where the different surgeons came up in, the, uh, in a different, different country. Surgery was a men-dominated world. 
the one of the discriminations in the world of surgery is towards women it has always been a men dominated world even in many of many countries it is still like that but things are changing women are coming much more and more towards surgery women surgeons are now recognized and one of the giants in that field one of the giant women surgeons is olga jonasen who has who has given considerable amount considerable contributions in transplantation surgery now the time is coming where more and more women surgeons are coming into the general surgery now comes to the black surgeons why black surgeons are important yes it is important because surgery was also a victim of racial discrimination racial discrimination has also played a part taken a toll in surgery we know that the american college of surgeons was formulated saying that regarding the ethics regarding surgical standards but even the american college of surgeons was dominated by the white man the works of the black surgeons were not published they were it was difficult for black surgeons to part, pass the surgical board examination they were oppressed racist racism was prevalent in american college of surgeons so what did the black surgeons had to do how did their work will get published how will they get say certification they formed the national medical association and it had a surgical wing where they could publish their works still the american college of surgeons are standing in a white dominated area they were they were not ready to change that easily then came this man charles drew he was a renowned surgeon during that period all these are happening in the 1950 60s range he was a renowned 1950 60s he was a renowned surgeon during that period he was the chairman of the department of general surgery in howard university he was offered the membership in american college of surgeons what did he say he said i don't want to be a member in your college in the college of american college of surgeons this is a racist organization you don't you, you are not uh, seeing everybody as equal so that made a problem for american college of surgeons they started to think they are getting hit from their own persons then came the claude organ junior he he was another he was a black surgeon what he did was he was editor in chief of archives of surgery he published the work of uh, black surgeons he wrote a lot of books uh, regarding the black surgeons and their achievement and he had, he had a positive effect and finally after enduring all this period black surgeons were accepted as equal to the white surgeons and more and more board certified examination there became a lot of board certified examination and finally surgery became free from the racism into the pure technical skilled surgery we have heard about the discriminations in surgery towards women towards black surgeons do we have a take home message from this the history teaches anything from this in your professional career as a surgeon you will also find this discrimination they may not be white they may not be of a they, they are may not be of a different gender but you may also come across this kind of favoritisms this kind of oppression by some of the irritating seniors by some of the bad teachers who favor someone over the other who doesn't recognize merit you will also you will all find this in your profession especially in surgery where you will kind of require some kind of a mentor or some kind of a teacher to bring you up so put yourself in the thought process of the black surgeon in the thought process of the woman surgeon who are oppressed once upon a time but they have fought through but they have come out through this all these difficulties all this oppression oppression into the modern day surgery with full power this is a lesson for all of you when things like that happen publish your work publish your work popularize your work take the pen along with the scalpel 
with the in the in your right hand you use called the scalpel you write with the left hand the pen and the scalpel should work together when favoritism and discrimination happens publish your work publish in journals pub publish articles write papers do research work you will be recognized there will be no other way for the other person they will have to recognize you because your sound is been reverberating all around the world not just in that institution alone after all this comes the modern era of surgery now the surgeon is not only considered as simply a sur operating surgeon he is also considered as a surgeon scientist who is in co going to give a very constant progress who is going to involve in the constant progress of the sur his own surgical techniques and the surgical technique of, of the whole in total by the world war 2 almost every organs and all the body cavities were explored from tip to toe so there was a realization for the surgeons during that period a single surgeon cannot learn all the procedures everything all the organs no so what happened there became the development of specializations the difficult the specializations was difficult especially in the cardiac area the cardiothoracic area was the most difficult specialization and maybe the last to evolve because uh, the heart was moving and there was blood so this problem was solved by john gibbon who found out the heart lung machine and with the heart lung machine he freed the heart and surgeons could do surgery in the heart another pioneer in that field is debeki debeki found out the dacron gas and he repaired a lot of aneurysms and many other cardiac diseases sabiston our textbook sabiston performed the uh, first cardiac coronary artery bypass graft next the plastic surgery was another field of development skin graft pedicle graft etc was used and free flaps were also used by the technique of vascular anastomosis or by our earlier alexis carroll what did he do alexis carroll performed vascular anastomosis so during that time there was rejection but the medical men found out that the rejection was due to the immunological process and you can stop rejection by giving immunosuppressions so the by use of vascular anastomosis the free flaps were used now why can't then people started thinking why can't we apply the same thing in organs then organ transplantation started develop, developing and the transplantation surgery also developed and during this period various specialties of surgery was developed and surgery became more of a team work than a single individual into from individual it was it has gone into teams and specializations and what happened a lot of money became important it became an expensive affair a lot of money becomes involved and the surgeons are also paid well so there ha there has been problems some some became at least some of the people became money oriented so the media the doubtful bystanders all the, all these came during during this period the media has became more concentrated on the work of surgeons the surgeons became more accountable for what they do if they do something wrong a lot of money is being lost a lot of uh, many things are at stake depending upon the decision of the surgeon so along with the development of surgery there has along with the good development of surgery there has always also been a socio economical repercussions by which the surgeon is made more accountable for what you do so as far as our clinical practice is concerned when we do a surgery think that we are responsible and record each and every every procedure we do in the proper way that will help us to save from a lot of litigations and a lot of other problems in the future so until now we have discussed the evolution of surgery till this day it started from the knowledge of human anatomy of andreas vesalius methods of controlling hemorrhage by ambroise pare 
Pathophysiology Surgical Basis of Surgical Disease by John Hunter, Advent of Anesthesia, The First Anesthesia in 1846 by William G. Morton, The Dawn of Antisepsis and Asepsis, Listerism, X-Rays by Ron Jen, The Giant Theatre to Room, The Giant Halstead, The Journals and Societies Formation, The American College of Surgeons, The Rise of the German Surgeons, The Fall of the German Surgeons, The Rise of the European Surgeons, the racism and discrimination in surgery, the woman surgeons and finally into the modern era where surgeon is considered as a surgeon scientist and in this period there has been innumerable number of surgeons, there has been a lot of surgeons whose names it will be more forgotten if we started counting them it will be more forgotten. There have been numerous procedures, the development of specialization, everything in the modern era and now we are standing in the modern era of surgery. And now, my dear friends, you know that surgery is not that an old, it's not an old science like medicine or other gynecology. Like you know, it is not an old science like that. It is a newer science. It is a budding science. The evolution has, even though we have discussed the evolution over 400, 300, 400 years, the evolution has not stopped here. You, each one of you, each one of you young surgeons, each one of you students who are aspiring to become surgeons will take the torch of evolution into the future. Evolution of surgery has not been stopped. It is a continuing process. The future of the evolved future of surgery with, is with you, is with each and every one of the surgical students, is with each and every one of the medical students who are listening to this topic. So take forward the torch of surgery in, into the future when we have problems when we have problems in our profession look back into the history look back into the giants who has overcome their problems look back into the people who were discriminated and who have come who came out through that operation and there is where the history of surgery matters thank you for your patient listening thank you